Hello, we are back with a new recap. This is the first time I've ever recapped Miss Super National. Super excited to get right into this episode. If you wanna support the channel and see more content like this, don't forget to subscribe and also hit that notification bell. Today's episode is brought to you by Rehearsed to Relatable. Ladies, if you are a pageant contestant and you wanna improve your pageant interview and learn how to stand out in the interview room, then click the description below to learn more. Since this is the first time I am recapping this particular pageant, I'm relying on so many of you out there who know more than I do about this organization to answer some questions that I have about the pageant, how it's scored, how things are run. So I'm going to be asking those along the way throughout this recap. I'm really excited to learn more and I want to see what you guys have to say in the comments. First, we have to talk about the production. Oh my gosh. Okay, this pageant is world-class when it comes to the production. I was very impressed by the way that they were able to incorporate performers in the opening number of this show. The contestants looked incredible. I thought they looked really cute in their purple and pink shimmering jumpsuits. It was great, looked great on stage. Honestly, I couldn't believe the type of dance moves that they were doing. I was like, that's a lot to ask of the contestants. Whoa, they were doing some Beyonce moves up there. But they looked incredible, loved the show opening really, really set a high standard for the show for me. At the beginning of the show, we also learned that the reigning Miss Super National 2019 was judging the competition. And this is something that I have really mixed thoughts on. That was one thing that I was like, mm, I don't love that. Just because the reigning title holder has so many interactions with the title holders and because there's a potential that she could have competed with them in years past, there could have been some sort of bad blood or misunderstandings that would have affected the way that she scores contestants. So I think that that adds an element of bias and that's something I'm not a fan of in pageant Entry, and I would like to see change for their future shows or really for anybody's future shows. I feel like you should wait just a little bit, have some time in there before you bring back a, a title holder to judge your current contestants, just so that it's the most fair judging system. Let's also mention the really cute clips of the contestants and how they were interacting with the sponsored products. I thought that was really well shot. It looked great. I love seeing the contestants out and about and getting to experience new things that pageantry has to offer to young women. That's the benefit of competing nationally or internationally. You get these really unique experiences and that's what I wanna see more of for contestants. A slight critique I have is the amount of backstage commentary. I feel like backstage commentary can be good if you're filling space in a show where you need contestants to change, but I felt like there was so much of it during this show. I was like, come on, come on, let's go, let's move along. I think we can shorten that up a little bit. The performance with the rhythmic gymnasts and the bubbles was it was just world-class. It was so beautiful. We got to see a ton of the contestants. I like that we actually got to see everybody in their swimsuits for the final show. You know what I mean? Like, why not? If we're gonna make a show long, let's just see everyone. Give everyone a moment on stage during the final show. That was beautiful. Next, there was an announcement for the top 24. The four first finalists to be announced though were selected and put into the top 24 for winning the Supra Top Model title, the Supra Chat winner, there were actually two Supra Chat winners, and the Miss Influencer Award. So this reminded me a lot of the Miss World competition, how there's multiple ways to qualify. I love that, it really mixes things up, but it does so based on merit. That's why I'm a fan of it. Now, the winner of Supra Chat, one of them, was Venezuela, and now I can say it. So the scoring for that was comprised 50% by the judges and then 50% by the audience vote, and I was invited to be a judge for that area of competition. So I got to judge, and Miss Venezuela, in fact, was my pick for the Supra Chat competition, so I was really excited to see her win that and be in that top 24. Once again, I need to mention the entertainment here. The entertainment value here is, I don't even, I don't even know what to say. It's just at such a high level, especially for pageantry. This was so beautiful. The white gown, the background, the lyrical dancer. I'm about all of it and I truly enjoyed it. And honestly, now I really wanna go see this pageant in person. This looks like a really, really fun time. After they cut to the top 24, they did these little segments where they talked about the accomplishments of each contestant. And I love that. And they really focused on their careers or life milestones. And I thought it was beautiful. It shows that these contestants are so much more than their physical beauty. Then right after that, the contestants got to wear an outfit that was featuring a designer from their country. 
once again, love that. The only thing I wish I could have seen was what the designer's name was <laughs> scrolling across the screen. I think that would have been a really great addition. Since I'm very new to this organization and watching the show, from my understanding, I assume that the contestants were scored here, and that's how we got from our top 24 to our top 12. I am not positive about that, but my personal favorites for this area of competition were Brazil, Dominican Republic, Haiti, Indonesia, Namibia, Netherlands, Peru, Philippines, Poland, Puerto Rico, and Venezuela. Next, the top 12 came out and they recompeted for the swimsuit competition. And this is something I was expecting. I was used to, I was ready for it. So I took notes for this portion. First, we have Belgium. This is good. She's a really beautiful contestant. I just thought that at the end, she was sitting really, really deep into her poses and that causes a loss of posture. Dominican Republic, oh my gosh, love the wind in the hair. She really, really hit those poses with her hips. It was just so well executed, loved that. India. Honestly, I liked her prelims performance more than this one. I can't tell you what it was, but I felt like there was just a little more magic in that prelims performance. Indonesia loved her facials for this. Honestly, she was so smooth. She was ready. She reminds me of my friend Noreen that just got married to Miss Utah USA 2018. Both, both very, very beautiful contestants, guys, but uh, that was just a random side note, but I love her. I love both of them. Now what was interesting to see is because we saw Indonesia right into Namibia, Namibia came out with a much more bubbly, fun, lighter type of walk. So since I haven't seen this before, I'm wondering if that is a type of walk that they prefer for the final competition. Let me know in the comments what, what you thought about that. Netherlands to me needs to go to Miss Universe, okay? That's where I wanna see her. I wanna see her on that stage. I don't know if she's eligible. I don't know about that. I want her to keep working on her poses and turns, but honestly would love to see her at Miss Universe. Philippines, great. Very, very relaxed on stage. The only thing I would have changed is holding that last pose just a second longer, even though this was a really, really fast performance. Poland was great. She really reminded me of the first runner up for Miss France. I don't know if you guys remember her at all. I think she, she was Provence. And she, yeah, when I saw her, I was like, hey, you guys kind of like a kind of similar vibe. And I liked it. It's really fresh and fun. Puerto Rico is just so gorgeous. I feel like that's the draw to her. I mean, her performances are just flawless. I see her and I think if you competed at Miss Universe in the early 2000s, that's a straight shot to the top five and a clear winner. I just, there's just something about her. Romania, so she was somebody who was actually on the fence for me during prelims and I actually had her in my notes, but I thought that the video was getting too long. That happens sometimes. So she was on the fence for me. I was glad to see her here though in, in the final show. I thought she was great. I thought that the facial expressions though were a little bit too fierce, especially in comparison to the contestants that moved on later in the show. South Africa did a great job. I didn't expect anything less. I thought though that her face could have been a little bit more present for the finals. I just wanted her to have fun, enjoy the moment. Venezuela watched this queen work. Okay, so if you watched it, her foot got caught a little bit at the end, but notice that it didn't affect her facial expression. And that's something I want to come across to contestants with. That's a message I want to reiterate. Ladies, it's okay if you trip or your foot gets caught or something, but don't let that affect everything else. Keep holding yourself up high. I mean, look at Venezuela, look at how far she got anyways. So great job. From this area of competition, the contestants that I really was drawn to were Dominican Republic, Indonesia, Namibia, Philippines, Poland, Puerto Rico, and Venezuela. Next, we saw everybody walk out in gowns. Some of them changed their gowns, some stayed the same. Uh, I was really confused by this because it was such a short walk, which overall, really, a lot of their walks were short for this pageant. But does that mean it was still scored? I, I wasn't really sure about this. So for a gown, the contestants that were standing out to me though were Dominican Republic once again. Indonesia was great. I thought this was such a beautiful gown change on her. I actually preferred this to her preliminary gown. I loved that. Namibia for me though, guys, it's in her eyes. Her eyes are where it's at. And I just felt like they had this light in them. They glow. And that was this big draw to her beauty. She's just so stunning. Philippines right here, the way that she walks to me just proves she's a veteran, okay? Like she knows what she's doing. And honestly, I easily could have seen her in the top five as well. Puerto Rico, I love the way that she carries herself. It's just, it's incredible. She needs to teach walking lessons because she knows how to carry herself on stage in front of a crowd. I love, 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 love her walk. South Africa, okay, this is what I was waiting for. This is what all of you guys were talking about in the comments, I'm sure. You were like, she's gonna come out for finals and boy, did she ever. This gown was perfection on her. It was gorgeous. It was the favorite piece for me that I saw her in the entire time. It was just, it was perfect. Venezuela came out in a new gold gown and of course the performance was great. Okay, one of the best walks that we've seen at this pageant. I actually preferred though the color of her prelims gown. I liked the white on her so I would have 
actually liked this gown if it was like a white and a silver mix. I just thought that it popped a little bit more, but regardless of that, I'm sure it was incredible in person. It was really neat how they had the fringe coming down the side on her slits, and I loved that about it. Next, we're gonna move on to the top five question. So our top five, each got a unique question and only one question. And the thing that got me here was that they didn't draw from a bowl. It seemed that the contestants were each designated to a different judge and the judge had their own question. So I'm really curious about that and, and who decides that. I much prefer a fishbowl because I feel like that's the most that's the most fair thing you can do. Namibia was asked, what would you discuss with the leader of your country if you could meet with them? And I felt her answer was very safe. She said that he did a great job managing the country during COVID and that she would ask him for advice on her own journey. And to me, that was really vague at the end because I didn't know what journey that she was talking about. We're talking about pageantry, life, business, whatever it was. So I thought that the answer was safe and a little bit vague, although she answered it well, though. Dominican Republic was asked a common question we've heard a lot and it was just what is the biggest lesson that you learned from the pandemic and once again very safe answer she spoke very well but it was pretty generic she talked about appreciating her friends and her family and her loved ones and that that's something that she would carry with her through life and want to teach to future generations Puerto Rico was asked if she had enough money and power to create a global charity what would it be about and she talked about advocating for mental health she's had her own struggles and issues with that I thought she she was doing really, really great. And then at the end, she seemed to get a little bit tongue-tied. I don't know why. I thought that the answer was great. Clearly the judges thought so as well because she, she placed very well. South Africa, I think, did a phenomenal job. So when she answered this question, I was a really big fan of it. It, it was up there for me. It would have gotten one of my top scores. And they asked her about cyberbullying and how it's affecting the youth. And she shared that as somebody who has been cyberbullied because of the industry she's in, <clears throat> pageantry, everyone better be nice, okay? Kind comments, they count. Uh, she says that that's the message that she would want to share is that you should ignore those things because the things that we see online they aren't always real. And the reason that somebody might be attacking you, it's not because of you, it's because of their own insecurities and the, the places that they fall short. And so they want to put that onto you. And But the way that she said it was so well done. And I was like, yes, 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 South Africa. But honestly, if you guys watch her national pageant, I really had no doubt that she would excel during an onstage question. Venezuela's question was about climate change. Another common one, why do you think that people nowadays are not taking climate change very seriously? And she says that she thinks that we should look at it from the viewpoint of a global citizen. And this answer, you guys, you need to go watch it. It was incredible. She said that as a global citizen that we should consider how our actions are affecting those around us. And honestly, guys, though, she killed it. You need to watch it for yourself. The way that she answered this question, she did not stutter, she did not stumble, she was confident. When I heard this answer, I thought she was gonna win. The placements for the show went like this. Fourth runner up, Dominican Republic, third runner-up, Venezuela, second runner-up, South Africa, first runner-up, Puerto Rico, and our winner was Miss Namibia, okay? So I wanna know what you guys thought of these results. Like I said, when I heard the onstage questions, I really felt like Venezuela was gonna win, but it was really difficult because each contestant in the top five to me was gorgeous. And I've heard from many of you that this organization looks for a model type or like a supermodel type of look. And each of them were just stunning to me. So I, I'm just so curious about the results and the judging. And it, did it just, did it come down to each judge's opinion on physical beauty or what that supermodel look is? Because everybody is going to have a different opinion for that. Nobody did anything for me in the onstage question that made me go, oh, that was not good or that was bad. I could have seen this going multiple ways and still going like, oh, yeah, okay, that makes sense. So it was, it was just interesting to watch that top five. So I want to see what you guys thought. Congratulations to all the contestants, though. It was a phenomenal show. It was beautiful. I'm actually really excited to keep covering this one. And if there's anything that you want to see on the channel, if you want to see covered it, please leave that in the comment section below. I'm always watching and paying attention. I want to bring to the channel whatever it is that you want to see. I want to say thank you to all of you as we are nearing that 80,000 subscriber mark. I just... It blows my mind. I just wanna remind you, please support the channel by subscribing and hitting that notifications. Please share it with your friends if you enjoy this content. I appreciate your support more than you know. So thank you for watching this episode and I can't wait to see you at the next one.